Hello, this is Scott Picciano, editor of telecoms.com, and I'm delighted to be speaking to Philippe Poggianti from Qualcomm. Uh, Philippe, I understand that you recently attended an event called uh, DigiWorld Summit in Paris, where, uh, among other things, you were speaking about millimeter wave. So why don't we just start by um, asking you what the key messages you focused on during that event were? Yeah, thank you, Scott. Uh, pleasure to do so. Um, so, so first, uh, 5G millimeter wave is a commercial reality in many parts of the world, with uh, consumers and enterprises reaping the benefits of it. The momentum is gathering in Europe, with many use cases presented at the DG World Summit event, uh, where we had people from Italy, uh, UK, Finland, etc. Second, the ecosystem is there, with the uh, infrastructure vendors all providing 5G millimeter wave base stations, and with more than 170 millimeter wave devices from more 75 device vendors, according to GSA, who was also invited at the summit. And I would say the third key message is that it is much cheaper for a European operator to cope with mobile traffic increase by adding 5G millimeter wave cells in high traffic locations, rather than to add many more 5G midband cells. So in these islands of capacity, the ratio is one to three and even up to one to four to the advantage of 5G millimeter wave, both in terms of capex investment, but also in terms of electricity bill. So that's a kind of a game changer. Okay, well, you may have slightly sort of anticipated my, my second question, um, but let's, let's see if there's anything further that you want to add. I just want to ask what you consider to be the biggest, biggest advantages of millimeter wave in general. Yes, so, so to summarize, um, to start with, 5G millimeter wave is simply another 5G frequency bands, which complements nicely the 5G low band and mid band deployments. But its biggest advantage is its massive capacity and its fiber-like speeds, which allows the operator to offer the best possible quality of experience wherever their subscribers are, whether at home or at work or on the go. According to a survey that we've conducted in nine countries, including the, the five large Western European countries, consumer would be ready to pay for a 5G enhanced service to remove the pain points that, are, that they are experiencing today in crowded areas. What is interesting is that they mention these pain points are not only when downloading or streaming content, but also when trying to upload content. We have all experienced uh, the frustration of not being able to share a video on social media during a concert or a sports game. And on the business side, Professionals who are on the go, such as salespeople or journalists like, like you, Scott, have all experienced the need to upload the content to the cloud in order to remain productive. So 5G millimeter wave is here to address these productivity issues with new and enhanced applications. This will help build a better society with everything instantaneously and intelligently connected to the cloud. And it is finally also true at home and in the office where 5G millimeter wave fixed wireless access is complementing fiber deployments, accelerating the access to broadband to unserved or underserved populations where they live, they work and play. Yeah, well, you mentioned um, the, the, the my journalist perspective. I've, I've often found it ironic in the past when I've attended telecoms events and found the, the connectivity insufficient for my purposes. Uh, that's obviously normally due to Wi-Fi, and maybe this sort of millimeter wave augmented 5G will mean that I don't need to rely on Wi-Fi anymore. So that's, that's one thing to look forward to. Okay, on, on the flip side, um, what about implementing millimeter wave? It's, it's a new technology. What are the biggest challenges you're seeing in its implementation? Yeah, first, let's remember we are we are uh, all players in the industry. Remember how operators were afraid of network planning for 3G at 2.1 gigahertz, and, and then even 4G at 2.6 gigahertz, and 5G at 3.5 gigahertz. The frequency bands are uh, increasing over time. And, and as an industry, we were talking about even, you remember, maybe islands of 3G in an ocean of 2G. This will be the same. 5G millimeter wave will be deployed as islands of capacity in an ocean 
of 5G low and mid bands, exactly where it matters for business and consumers. So the goal is to have the CMOs of the operators to define the new and enhanced experiences for their consumers and business customers, which can only be offered by this full 5G combination of mid-band and millimeter wave. Leveraging the vast amount of 5G millimeter wave use cases that are already in use uh, around the world today, they can pick and choose what best suits their needs, of course. Then, the industry ecosystem is ready to help the CTOs to make it a technical success in the field. And this is where the, the, we will work together the, the, the field challenges. And this will pave the way for 6G, where higher frequency bands will be routinely used. So getting a head start in such implementations is a bounty for tier one operators. And by doing so, let's keep in mind that it will save them up to 75% of their capex and up to 70% of their electricity bill to cope with the mobile traffic increase of the next few years in these crowded locations. Great, well, um, just, to, just to finish off, since, since you're already looking forward in, in your previous answer, perhaps I can ask more generally, just looking at this year, we're at the start of 2023, um, how do you expect the market to change this year? I see the market, the 5G millimeter wave market will continue to expand in 2023 and beyond. Ultimately, operators will deploy 5G millimeter wave on the road to 6G. Uh, more than 170 devices for more than six, 65 vendors have already been announced or launched. The diversity of form factors from, from smartphones to fixed wireless access uh, CPEs, to modules for industrial devices enables 5G millimeter wave to be used in a wide number of use cases at home, in the enterprise, and on the go. In Italy, for example, 5G millimeter wave is now commercially available for fixed wireless access for both consumers and for businesses. So we can expect further opportunities to develop uh, this year. Let me take a few examples. 5G millimeter wave spectrum has recently been allocated in key countries such as Italy, Spain, Brazil, and India uh, in complement to 5G midband spectrum. So we can certainly expect some further movements in these countries. And as usual, and maybe when we, 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 we next meet, the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona will be an important event for the industry in February. GSMA, the organizer, has announced that they will hold their already the third millimeter wave summit, which is based on their millimeter wave accelerator initiative that they launched more than a year ago with tier one operators such as Verizon, Docomo, Telecom Italia, Deutsche Telekom, Telefonica, and Telstra. So it will be very interesting to see what comes out of it this year as it will give some trends for the year ahead and, and of course beyond. Look forward to being here with you. Yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. And that's a really good uh, heads up for me journalistically to keep an eye out for millimeter wave as a, as a key theme at Mobile World Congress this year, which I've no doubt it will be. So that's very interesting. And, and thanks a lot for your time. It's great speaking to you. Thank you very much, Scott. Bye-bye.